Hello everyone, today I'm with Marcela Sintra. Okay, Marcela is a teacher, is an English teacher, she lives in Sao Paulo. Uh, she's been a teacher for over 20 years, right Marcela? Yes, yeah. that's right. <laughs> uh, she has an impressive um, CV, she's a Delta tutor, Celta tutor, uh, an ISALT, ISALT tutor as well, right? And you're currently doing your master's in TESOL, yes. right? That's right. Thank you so much for uh, this interview, Marcel. It's a pleasure to talk to you. Since I watched you in Sao Paulo last month in a um, uh, brass TESOL uh, mm -hmm. event, I was, uh, I was amazed by, by, by your uh, talk uh, on professional development. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really uh, glad to, to have you here talking to me. Thank you, Cecilia. I'm, I'm really glad. It's my pleasure, really. Thank you. So, um, my, my first question, Marcela, is why did you decide to become a teacher? Um, it's a genuine question. <laughs> I, I, I'm <laughs> always uh, curious to know why teachers decide to become, you know, teachers. <laughs> um, that's a very interesting question, Cecilia, because um, I decided to be a teacher when I was very, very young. Um, when kids wanted to play, I wanted to play school uh -huh. like a teacher. Mm -hmm. and, and from that moment onwards, every time people asked me what I wanted to be, I always said, I want to be a teacher. I, I hadn't decided what kind of teacher, what I, I would see. teach, but a teacher. A I teacher. knew that. Uh -huh. I to be a teacher and when I was 14 I was invited by my French teacher to, to, to help her to help with her lessons in school I studied in a state school um, mm -hmm. and there were French lessons then the government uh, decided not to include French in the curriculum and the teacher decided to to do that voluntarily and that's what when I actually started teaching so you I started with 14. French I was 14, wow. yes, I'm yeah. impressed. Um, voluntarily, mm -hmm. and from that moment onwards, <laughs> never stopped. <teaching. laughs> yes, that was it. That's that's interesting, yeah. And um, I've read some of the uh, some of your blog posts on Richmond Share, uh, which is an amazing uh, blog you should check out. Uh, Richmond Share. I will leave the uh, the link on the comments and um, there is one on feedback that you wrote on yes. feedback right and uh, how important is feedback I mean giving feedback and receiving feedback uh, for you and how um, uh, how can teachers make feedback giving and receiving feedback more meaningful and more truly um, engaging and productive um, as professional development to me, yes, right? Yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, on a scale from zero to ten, I would say feedback would be ten. Mm -hmm. um, very, very, very important. I think this is um, what helped me the most. And feedback, I mean, any, any type of feedback, not mm -hmm. only feedback people intended to give, but also um, involuntary feedback, like what students tell you and they don't mean that as feedback or they don't want to help you develop, but that helps you develop. Um, so extremely important, not as frequent as we would like it to be perhaps in, in Brazil, especially in Brazil. Um, and you mentioned something very important. We, we most of us like giving feedback, mm -hmm. but we resent being given feedback. Yes. Yeah. Most of the time. Uh, we want praise or we want confirmation of what we do well. Validation, but, right? Validation, mm. but hardly ever um, ask for feedback, constructive feedback, in a way. Um, I, I won't discuss why or the reasons, so, social reasons for that, but I think for teachers, for us English teachers, um, we have to find a way of um, listening more than we actually do. Mm -hmm. Listening, and it doesn't mean that we need to, to accept feedback the moment it's given to us. Because that's not going to be easy, it's never easy, it's something you have to, to change perhaps, or something else you have to learn, and learning is painful, right, to mm -hmm. everyone. 
So yeah. take your time. Um, I usually write everything people tell me, either at the moment they're telling me um, or later on, on a notebook. And I leave my notes for a, a special moment when I'm um, lighter, open, and, mm -hmm. and I see that I need to do something about it or I need to change. This is how I listen to it better. I register um, feedback. Mm -hmm. uh, written feedback I mean people say I put everything together and then I read it reflect about that reflecting um, and thinking about what to do and how to do it um, is very important but it's also very important to ask questions mm -hmm. and not general questions but um, because what people say is oh how can I become a better teacher mm -hmm. that's Broad question. It could be anything, right? Um, I don't know. It, it could be something that doesn't have to do with planning, or it could be planning. Mm -hmm. It could be technical or not. Um, but asking for specific feedback and asking key people, people you trust, mm -hmm. to give mm -hmm. you honest feedback. And um, I think this is another tip: honest feedback, giving honest. and receiving, because. Uh, because of this society, mm -hmm. people like praising and then people tend to praise more than um, give constructive feedback sometimes. It's empty praising, right? No, everything is fine. I, I have nothing to add to your lesson or to your teaching or to your professional development. And behind your back, they have all the, the tips in the world. Right. Um, those are not the people you should trust, the professionals. Um, asking for feedback... Um, from people who can actually generally, generously give you something mm -hmm. and contribute to, to your professional development. Those are the tips. They're very rich. Um, and, and this is the key. And also give feedback mm -hmm. in a way that will help the person, asking questions. Um, right. Feedback I to myself is always asking questions, like mm -hmm. how, how would it be better? How mm -hmm. can it be better than it mm -hmm. than it? Even if it's good, because feedback is not only for something that you're doing wrong or right. you should, but you can do differently. Yeah. And do you improve. believe in that um, that saying that there is always room for improvement? Always. Yeah. Always. always. This is um, key in in becoming a teacher mm -hmm. that that will never be ready. Mm. Uh, yeah. Forever working with education, people change, things change. Mm -hmm. We have to. change. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's hard. It's hard to accept it that. It is, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, you uh, frequently attend uh, conferences, talks, uh, attending and giving, yeah. And uh, for you, how important it, it is to uh, attend uh, um, conferences, um, either here in Brazil or internationally, brass tea salt conferences and local association conferences. And um, and also, which do you have a favorite talk with a talk that you like you like giving the most, or a talk that was very popular? <laughs> mm, a difficult question. I, I really never thought about that. I don't think I have a favorite talk. Mm. Um, I I really enjoyed talking about teaching unplugged, like. Um, getting rid of all the, the needs to print mm -hmm. and risks and thinking more about the people. I really enjoyed that, but I'm not sure it's my favorite. Um, and conferences, very, very important. Um, webinars as well, because mm -hmm. some complain, oh, I, I can't travel or the time's yeah. not good for me, but webinars as well. Um, and why I think it's important, it's, it's um, the key there, because... If you, if you want to learn something different, you need to listen to different people, not the mm -hmm. people you see every day, not only the teachers you talk to every day or people you see on the internet. You have to meet new people. And this is why I, I enjoy going to conferences. And I make a point of being there for other people's talks and mm -hmm. workshops. And I, I have to say they're not all good or the best they could be, perhaps, but mm. they, they really teach me something, if it, even if it's um, not what I expected initially, because this is one of um, the concerns people have when they attend conferences. Oh, the, the title is incredible, and then when I go there, it's not what I expected. Mm -hmm. 
it usually isn't. And the problem is perhaps not the person who's giving the talk, but our expectations. Expectations, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and this is one of the points. Another point is presenting. And believe it or not, I'm a very shy person. I am. And, and this, is, um, this was one of my main uh, points for development. I mm -hmm. wanted to be in front of people and, and actually um, take the chance or the challenge of um, making myself vulnerable mm -hmm. to other comments or questions or whatever. And every time I do it, I really shake my hands, sweat, and uh -huh. this is the, the the thrill in the end, right? When it when it's all right, mm -hmm. in, depending on the people who are there. Fantastic. So I strongly recommend it. Uh huh. Great, great. And um, um, so you're a manager at one of the biggest um, language institutes in Brazil, Cultura Inglesa, right? What yes. are the biggest challenges that you have to face on, on a daily basis or quite, quite frequently? I think they're, they're not different from um, other people's challenges. Um, mm -hmm. We deal with people. This is our biggest challenge, um, be it students, teachers, our colleagues, um, dealing with people and keeping everyone motivated or on the, the, the right track. I think this is the biggest challenge. Um, this is what we face as teachers in the classroom, um, keeping all students uh, focused and learning or motivated to learn. And then when we become managers, keeping the teachers on the right track, people are the biggest yeah. challenge. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, 